Good morning guys, this is Richard back at you. Before we get started on our unit back there, Cody called me out and said, hey Richard, you gotta come here and look at this. We've got an eight speed in here on the lift that we're fixing to be putting a unit in and he wanted to show me some things. He says he thinks it got hot. So we come over here and uh, we look like we got some solenoids in the pan. And it looks like we got uh, Cody cut the filter apart and look how it even sucked the plastic into the filter and just plug the filter totally up with uh, plastic off the solenoids and stuff. Pretty crazy. If you look up here too, the plastic that holds the cooler lines uh, together, it melted that off there too. Piece of it actually already fell down. But if you look in here at the tranny, look at this guys. What a, a beauty. Got some solenoid connectors here starting to melt too. I'm not sure where the plastic come from, but it, I mean, it's just totally melted unbelievable but you can see what it looks like in the pan of an eight speed a lot of solenoids you can also see here uh, when they have the start and stop uh, uh, on the vehicle this is your engagement accumulator right here uh, so that way uh, when it starts in gear it doesn't just slam into gear now some of them on the outside like Trent's over here Trent's pulling the front wheel drive out it's got an engagement accumulator on the outside of the tranny and then on this one here that's uh, on the inside you know, they say there's probably four or five different designs out there, but some on the inside, some on the outside. And actually, some of these units have the starter for the vehicle on the inside of the bell housing on the Chevrolet. So if the starter goes bad, you got to pull the tranny out. So, but anyway, thanks, Cody, again for showing us. Yes, sir. I'm telling you guys, you never know. I mean, the heat in Texas right now, heat kills. you got to get these things running really cool. It was 107 yesterday. Somebody walked in the door. Trent, somebody walked in the door. Ooh, yeah, I can't can't do it here without that machine, definitely. Cleans our cases. So, really nice. And you gotta lay down. It's air conditioned in here. Yeah. Well guys, what we got here this morning, um, I let a gentleman talk me into bringing a, a unit in here. And well, it was in two different He kinda just sent it and then we <laughs> talked. <laughs> then we discussed about yeah. it. But anyway. I uh, come in different containers uh, and we're going to be taking a late model and switching it to an early uh, design input shaft and pump. So what we got, we got an input shaft like this and a drum basically and then we got this style here. Now this is an early design big shaft. This is the style we're going to be putting back in it and we're also going to be putting what we call a short stator style pump. This is the stator for this one. If you put them side by side and you can see the different lengths. So now the customer did send all of his parts here, except this drum here. We're going to clean it up, make sure everything looks good, and we're going to do some swapping. He says this drum in here is really good, so we're just going to swap out uh, the two pieces and we'll be good to go. Now he also sent some five pinion planets. Look really nice. So we still want to look at every piece before we put it in there, even though he sent it to us. Uh, same with the sun gear for any type of pitting. So we replaced 90% of them. The ring gear, you definitely want to look at this side here. And this one here has got quite a bit of wear right through here. So we'll be trying to find another ring gear for this one here because we don't want to put a bad one in there. And then you get over here and you look at the five pinion forward planet he sent us. Looks really nice. Now he also sent me a Sonex uh, input hub here. Anytime you get used those, there's retrofits from the early to late. Uh, they talk about a shim uh, that you put in a 30,000 shim, uh, but they want you to look through here and through here to determine uh, what year planetary you have to where you need to set it up. So, pretty simple. Like I said, he sent us all the parts. Sent us a drum here that looks really nice. Bushings are terrible, but this drum looks brand new like it's never been used. So. But anyway, a few items we're going to be putting in here that he brought us. We have our precision gasket set, our wide band, our Transgo Pro programming kit we're going to put in there. I thought I had a couple of valves and stuff I was going to help him out and use, but I didn't have the spring, so we ended up having to get one of them just to make sure he had a, a manual low capability at any speed. Uh, wiring kit, we have our Sonex 3-4 uh, clutch boost valve here, or the, the release springs here. I said valve, but I was looking at this one. But you can see your accumulator feed limit valve fits all 460, 65, 70s applications. And these are load springs here. 
And also, what do we got here in this one here? We got our bushing wide sun gear. Now this bushing here is a lot wider to go in your sun gear down in here. If you look at the original one right here, this is what it looks like compared to the Sonex ones. Night and day difference. Yeah. So you just got to be careful pressing this in because sometimes when you get it in, it's pretty tight. You might have to hone it a little bit to fit, but they're really a big upgrade. Of course here, this is our 2-3 shift uh, valve here, heavy duty. You also sent new uh, bearings, new Sprag, Z-Pack, Smart Shell. Uh, I mean, just about everything he sent. We, we still got the pressure solenoids and shift solenoids, stuff like that we're going to be testing. I think he wants to use some of his old stuff because he don't trust new stuff, and sometimes we don't do that, trust that stuff either. We do a lot of testing. But the pressure control solenoid, you definitely want to always replace that uh, because you just never know on that. Um, like I said, he added this, these parts here, but then we got our sun gear, we got our lower sprag, we got our pump kit here, and then uh, whatever else it's going to take to uh, get this unit together. So, but anyway, we're going to help this gentleman out, do a little mixed breeding, and, and get this unit uh, going. Because guess what, guys? Two weeks, we're going fishing. We're going on vacation, ain't we, Teresa? Yay! And we are ready. Ready. But, ready, definitely. But guys, don't forget to subscribe. Push that notification bell. Wait, are oh. you forgetting something? <laughs> Man, I got ahead of myself big time today, didn't I? Bad. We just need that vacation. That's, uh, when we start talking about vacation, I was thinking about throwing a fishing pole. <laughs> Go ahead. I just switched very quickly. <laughs> let me tell you. This might be a Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Well, let's look at this uh, pump that we got here. <laughs> you know, I have. a short video. Yes. Seven minutes. Well, you know, anytime you get ready to go on vacation, you, it's like, let's go. You are ready to go. It even makes it harder to come to work. Yeah. So, so you want to look at in these areas, put you a nice wide bushing there. Now, even though we're going to the different style converter, uh, we're still going to put the wide bushing back here. because They do make a, a narrow and a wide. The bushing kit comes with them both. I always put the wide in, in all the units. I don't even mess with the narrow. So, boost valve. Let's see what we got in here. Now our transgo kit back there will have our boost valve and stuff like that. So this could be a one ringer, two ringer, two ringer. So this is a bigger one than the single. Uh, sometimes you can really put this boost valve in and put the shift kit valve or the spring in there. Works really good. Um, like I said, when you, anytime you put a boost valve in there, the first thing we do is pressure gauge right off the bat. So, I also I got to talk about a check ball. A gentleman asked about a check ball. I talk about it. sometimes I leave it in, sometimes I leave it out. I'd actually it wasn't the one in the back of the case. It was for the uh, three four accumulator. He talked about Richard. You contradicted yourself. You say you put it in, you you put it back, you leave it out. I mean, you can do it either way. Uh, because once you block the accumulator in the case, it's no, it doesn't work anyway. We have our slide spring. Like I said, he didn't send any of the overhaul parts for the uh, clutch or the pump inside. No paddles, nothing like that. So. quite a bit of wear there and I've, I've been talking to people actually about the COVID about how it's it's really been kind of hard to, to do these videos a little bit different I mean it's normally I could come in here and just click it off click it off but now it seems like I'm having a little bit harder time on thinking putting it in sync anyway on uh, how to explain it so hopefully it'll get better he says it will and uh, so I might have to say one thing and have to correct myself so just a lot of things going on yeah, I want vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already thinking I'm at the <laughs> lake right now got my fishing pole out thinking about my next transmission job <laughs> oh my gosh huh <laughs> that's usually how it goes
Got all of our bolts. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, man, you're hard on parts, Richard. Nah, you just got to remember, these parts, you can, some stuff you can throw around, some stuff you can't. So, you just got to know what you can throw around and what you can't. Had a pretty good smell, huh? Because that eight speed out there stunk like no other. So we got our pillow switch there. Really early design. We want to definitely upgrade this. Make sure that wasn't brand new. Okay. As far as I know, they haven't done nothing to this unit. And it all looks stock. He did send all of his uh, pistons, his aluminum pistons, so we can replace all of them. Just remember to scotch bright anywhere that your seals are going to be running up and down, your pistons. A little shadow there, nothing major. Normally there'd be an inner spring on this too. Might be missing. Might be in a bag somewhere. Mm, that one's a used piston, but he does have new ones over there. Same way with this one here. Just scotch brought it really good through there. It just seems like when if you don't scotch bright them, the piston, the servo piston, wants to kind of stop, uh, kind of squeak going down the the bore, and give you really funny shifts until it gets wore in uh, and, and hot and cold a few times, those pistons really don't want to slide correctly. But if you scotch bright it, it uh, puts some oil in those uh, little scratches and lets it slide a lot better. Say round hole, round hole. Now look at this really close. because Just because we have a round hole, round hole and this is a late model case, we got to make sure we don't have no crazy stuff going on here because this is where you can get into trouble in this area right here so you want to start really looking at stuff make sure we don't got nothing mismatched because i'm gonna have to talk to him again and make sure that this valve body just to see what he done himself because like i said we got a pile of stuff here Is that pretty nice? Yep. Now, let's see here. Okay, well, let's see what he's got in here for his boost valve first. Because being that this is a, no, it's a late on this. I think it's a short one. Let me get this out. Ooh. Huh. Looks like somebody did some spacing. These look like ATX pump washers. Oh, Ford ATX pump washers. I've never really seen them shim up a... This looks like a Sonex boost valve, possibly. I've never seen them put spacers under these like that unless it was a transgo boost valve. They got that one spacer, but these look like uh, ATX uh, pump bolt washers. Early, early. Oh, I want to measure that. Make sure the same height. The uh, later design, it's a lot shorter. So this boost, I mean, like, so we got a kit over there, so we do have something to put back in there. 
course on all the pieces in here we can retrofit back into the early drum Looks a little wore out, not bad. See on this seal right here, a chunk missing out of it right there. See that? Mm. Right there. Yep. So uh, got ponded pistons. And the fact that there's not any fluid in it. Yeah, it's pretty nice, huh? Yeah. She threatened me saying if I got oil on her clothes today that I was going to be in big trouble. That's, he's sloppy. He throws everything around. <laughs> hmm. there you go. So, well guys, you can see I kind of got a mess going on here. How did you do the, that little uh, check ball? Oh, check ball. Yes. Okay. He asked me about this check ball right here. If I talk about leaving it in, leaving it out. Once you block this right here, this check ball means nothing. You can leave it in, you can leave it out. It's just whatever you want to do. A lot of people that's not familiar with check balls and stuff like that, and they do a lot of stuff that I do uh, off the internet, uh, they just put it in anyway. So just put it in there, that way it doesn't bother you, you don't lose no sleep over it or anything like that. Uh, if you left it out, you'd be going, hmm, should I done that, should I done that? But anyway, when you block this, that check ball means nothing, okay? But that's how it is but anyway uh, we thought he was talking about this check ball here uh, if this check ball falls out leave it out don't take the capsule out leave the capsule in there you can take the check ball out if you want they use that check ball to regulate uh, reverse engagement a little bit uh, to control uh, how firm it goes in the gear you have two clutches applying in reverse and some four-wheel drives and stuff like that, you might get clunking and stuff like that. And they try to eliminate all that gear train noise and stuff like that by doing that. But anyway, guys, again, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And Teresa, you know we just love you and we thank you so, so much. Annie, gone. Guys, again, have a great day.